that reminds me. Hello, YouTube. Welcome in. I appreciate that you are continuing to watch GTA 5 with a therapist. Really means a lot to me. I've appreciated so much all of the engagement on the first couple of videos. So thank you for all the likes, for the comments, and the subscriptions, and all that stuff. It has been really cool to see. I encourage you to continue to do that on these videos. I hope that you're enjoying it. If you are really enjoying it, and you want to know how to support the channel beyond your viewership and engagement, uh, I do have a merch store available. It's drmick.store. You can get that link down in the description. Also follow me on all the various social media like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitch, all that fun stuff. And uh, if you do become a member on YouTube by hitting the join button, or if you do send a tip while I'm offline, Thank you very much for your financial support of the stream. It's never expected, but it does make a big difference, so thank you. But more than anything, I appreciate you watching these videos, and I hope that I continue to live up to your expectations and how I do them. So let's do part four. Let's go talk to Lester. All righty. Just a heads up, your Twitch link isn't in your YouTube banner or about page. Sean, we got to fix that. I got to make a mental note of that. Thank you for telling me that. Um, missed. I appreciate that. Alrighty. Lester, my dude, where are you? You're down here. Okay. Let's go for a drive. Also, Sean, how was the podcast tonight? Give me a, give me a little taste of the, the Concession Stand podcast. How'd that go tonight? If y'all don't follow the Concession Stand podcast, twitch.tv slash Sean, Sean, Sean H. Or on whatever place you get your podcasts, my dear friends Sean, Jared, and Micah, and occasionally myself, review movies and talk about them. It's a grand old time. You should check it out. podcast was very tangent filled. It was a real good time. Nice. Love it. Damn it. Alrighty. Does it count as music if I put talk radio on? It does. That's a bummer. This way. And then we're gonna pull a Yui on the on the highway. Oh baby, nothing like merging across five lanes of traffic. And oh yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah, I, I get it, man. You, I understand your anger. Oh baby, we're cruising now. Recalculating. I was just one of those assholes that just stops in the middle of the highway because they have to calculate what they did wrong. Fine, we stay on the highway for a little longer. No biggie. What up, Juice? Lester, what do you got for me, bud? Fuck you, Lester. You gonna let me in or what? Give me a minute. <sighs> <laughs> wow. 
maximum security. I was wondering when you'd show up. I was dead. Praise be. Guess you weren't very dead. You need my help. How do you know? Because you came here. Why else would you? <clears throat> I haven't been a good friend for you, Lester. I know that. And you're going to make it up to me by doing whatever I ask. Or rather, I, I mean, I need something done. You need to know something, so why not help each other? I got to make some dough. So you're back in the game? I guess. Look, Lester, about what happened before. I know you never mentioned my name. I know I'm not on any lists anywhere. I know you never betrayed me. As for you, you got to figure that I never told anyone. That instead of gently decomposing in North Yankton, you're angrily decomposing in Los Santos with a shrink and a wife who don't love you no more. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> since you put it like that... Hey, shut up a minute. I'm getting an eye find alert. That little college boy sack of shit phony fuck. Who? Jay Norris? Yes. That fuck is a lying bastard. I've read his fucking emails. He's a fucking cheat. I heard him say that he saved America. What, by but outsourcing all the jobs? By selling us little bits of plastic restricted access shit? Well, now it's payback time, you lying turd. The hell are you talking about? You are about to get that white collar gig that you always dreamed of, Mikey. Here, take this uh, fashionably retro weird for a 45 year old man, but I cannot let go of the 1980s bag <laughs> and dress yourself up like a billionaire math genius with low level Asperger's. You better be ready for the minor glitch of your repulsive pseudo messianic life. Okay, Lester. Get out of here! Call me when you're ready. We are about to put the Darwinism back in social Darwinism. And brother, it is gonna be fun. You fucking kidding me? I'm a bank robber, not a web designer. So we'll go robbing soon. I'll, I'll find something. Just like the old days. <laughs> as much as I love catching up, please excuse me. I've got something shameful to do. <laughs> Now, I mean, this may seem obvious, but we're gonna we're gonna sort of build from here. Lester, by having basically a maximum security perimeter, suggests to me that he is particularly sensitive to the uncertainty of the world. That he is doing everything he can to control his environment. Whether that is the result of a series of traumatic incidents, whether it's because he is just genuinely afraid of things that are unpredictable, perhaps because he doesn't have the physical prowess to be able to meet any threats that come his way. He has controlled his perimeter. And as a result, has really isolated himself out in a way that probably perpetuates a continued fear of the outside environment because it becomes increasingly predictable because he's not staying on top of it beyond the security perimeter that he's set up. And that, I just sort of creates for me this sense that, like, where is Lester at mentally as a foundation and it's likely that he's got some sensitivity to a loss of control and thus overcompensates for that by trying to control every aspect of the environment including people and people are very difficult to control but he's probably somebody who has and this is not a bad thing compensated for a lack of again physical prowess by outsmarting everybody using his brain and adapting to the social circumstances that come his way. I mean, it's, it's stating the obvious because of how, you know, 
you might look at this and go, this is ridiculous. Was there something else? Intense security is often the result of a sense of insecurity. But it's all overcompensation for that. What's the thing behind the thing? Now we're taking this, I don't really fully understand what we're doing here. But we're taking this backpack. Lord knows what's in it. But, I will say this, as we drive here, oh no, I'll pause. What we do see is trust. Okay, so if we want to look at the dynamic between Lester and Michael, I understand this is the first engagement we've seen, but Michael just unconditionally said, okay, I'll do this. There was a little bit of pushback, but Lester has created some form of trust. Michael is not a person that easily lets other people take control. He's not really a yes man, at least not that we've seen so far. And Lester says, go do this. And Michael says, okay, cool. And you need that kind of trust if you're going to do some of the stuff that I'm sure the two of them got tied up in. But even after all these years, it was boom, back to, I, I, we know that we, we knew we're cool. So I will be curious to see if we add people to the picture, if that trust weans or how that dynamic changes between Michael and Lester, because we're going to get more information from them as a result of that. What age would you endorse playing this game? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's rated for 17 plus. I don't think that's a terrible metric. Several hats off to whoever's editing you into the GTA pictures for Twitter. Excellent work. That is me doing those. Sean does the YouTube thumbnails. Uh, I have done the Twitter ones. But I appreciate the uh, the kind words about it, Deal. All right, let's rock. Let's go. Driving in this game is better than it is in some, like, legitimate racing games. I really appreciate that. Suburban. <laughs> ah, excuse me. I got this interview at this tech company. I'm thinking I need something, I don't know, geeky, youthful. Lost your job and the world's moved on, huh? That's too bad. <laughs> I didn't lose my job. Of course. Got too old, got outsourced. Same thing happened to my dad. <laughs> now you gotta fit in with a different generation. Hmm? What about a vest and some cargo shorts? Oof. Oh, no. No, Michael, no. No, no, no. That might just work. Good luck at the interview. Bye. Yeah, dignity aside. Oh man, this is uh, this is quite the look. This is good, fitting in. What's up, fellow kids?
Everything. I'll do anything for the bit. Michael, I'm all dressed up. Now you want to run me through this thing? The prototype is somewhere in the Life Invader office. Find it and fit it with the device in your bag. They just gonna let me in? Why wouldn't they if you look the part? Hang around till someone opens the door and act entitled. Fine. So we're going to Life Invader. I appreciate the need to adapt, though. You know, like you you, you do gotta kind of look the part. You gotta you gotta show up confidently. You have to show an awareness of the environment you're about to go in. I don't know that authenticity is gonna get the job done here. So. Entrance. Look at that. I'm even slinging the bag on one shoulder with both straps like a weirdo. What are you doing, Michael? pushing for more functionality <laughs> but we are maxed I mean if anything we have to strip features especially if we plan on releasing a fully yeah. priced update a year later oh my you know it's yeah well you know you gotta do what you gotta do you know I mean we're talking beta in Q4 maybe Q3 look milestones are one thing but when design is changing its mind yeah. seemingly overnight there's not much you can do about it you look, know what I'm saying uh, my union allocated smoke breaks about up so wait a minute do I know you? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I tea temp, right? Yeah. You know, you gotta do something for me. Ah, uh, you gotta put it in a ticket. Uh, no. <laughs> I'd like to keep this one out of the database, if you know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> you gotta put it in a ticket, I love that. <laughs> I'm totally becoming a tech evangelist when the big boys vest. Maybe not even tech. I'll evangelize anything. Okay, cool. Hi. Oh, hi. Chill out on the beanbag. Marcus will be right out. Oh, um, I'm gonna take a normal chair. I have a terrible back. Really? The brief was for a relaxed, creative individual, the kind that preferred a beanbag over a real chair, but if you're so bound to social restraints... No, 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 I'm not restrained at all. I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll take a seat. Mm. See? Mm. You're relaxed already. Let the creative juices flow. Kaboom! You just got pwned, my friend. My God, I wouldn't. I, I can't. I can't stand it. Oh my God. <laughs> Here you go. If you guys let me use the OS I requested, this wouldn't be a problem. Ah, oh, you've been added on this PC. Uh, got any antivirus software? I think so. Behind this junk on the left. Clicked an NSFW <laughs> link, bro. Bit me on the ass. Yeah, not safe for work, huh? Oh, God. You know, my son's computer runs into the same kind of problems. Okay, we got some space. I'll try to boot up this antivirus. Hmm, guess I gotta close the rest of them down. God damn it. This place is fueled by Java, bro. <laughs> There it goes. You want a massage? Cause my hands are free. <laughs> and that should do it. Why don't you try and keep things strictly safe for work from now on? <laughs> hey, have you seen the prototype in the demo room? When Norris announces it at the keynote, minds are gonna blow. Yes, they are. <laughs> oh god. How many uh people who grew up <laughs> in 
in the early 2000s just had a nice blast from the past. That takes me way back. <laughs> Wow. Easy peasy. Imagineering room. Work hard, done? play hard. We couldn't do it without the little guys. Bye now. Welcome. Bienvenue. Bienvenidos. Enjoy because we're all about to be out. That's a meme right there. You would not believe the amount of personal data the sheep are giving out. You know, I as as annoying as this may be, when we go as annoying as like some people may find this, I do have to say that like don't all of us in some way aspire to working and making a living doing something that we enjoy in an environment that we feel accepted in? Like, isn't, like, really, that is kind of a nice thing. So even if this is maybe obnoxious for some of us, there are some folks that would say that this fits in, that this is exactly what they want. This is, this is perfect. I get to, I get to be in a, a chill environment with colors. I get to know my coworkers. It's a little more relaxed. I can be myself. I can engage with myself authentically. I understand that what they're doing for Life Invader is not exactly great. But sometimes I think it's important for us to evaluate if some of the frustration or annoyance that we experience when we see something like this has to do with envy. Like even if the environment might not be for us, watching people thrive in an environment that doesn't work for us, if we're in a position that we're not thriving in, can be hard to see. And we can get angry at it. Right? So like envy plays a role sometimes with stuff like this. And I think it's important to understand that because you can learn a little bit about yourself in that process. If you experience envy walking in a place like this and that is really what your frustration is oriented around, then maybe that means that there needs to be some extra push for you to find your ability to be authentic in the place that you're in or maybe there's some changes maybe you don't make them at work but you make them in other places in your life but like a lot of us really do value authenticity and an ability to be accepted for who we are and how and how we are and i realize that this is a culture that pushes for cer certain things and like you know the guy sitting on the beanbag chair is a perfect example of how you can go kind of radically in the other direction but people of Michael's generation in this game grew up probably with a lot more like corporate loyalty, buttoned up, rules, management structures, and all that stuff. And then they see this more free-flowing environment that's a direct response to, we don't want that, and maybe experience a bit of envy because they weren't able to access that. Well, we'll be able to track all their movements. We'll know everything. That's so cool. So just check in with yourself on where your judgments are coming from. That's the important message here. Invader Cafe. Foot bang, dig fast. Ow. Come on, you're gonna have to learn the foot bag if you want to get a job here, okay? Follow me. Okay. Oh. How's your air guitar? Oh, um. All right, follow me. Okay. This may not be the place for this guy. And that's okay. Some a-hole drank my effing hemp milk! There was a totally non-passive aggressive note on it! If I drown in mucus, it's your fault, you illiterate effing seas! Ooh. 
is forbidden to smoke in this premises. So, all right, watch the keynote at Michael's house. Can do. All right. Hey, Michael, hold on, hold on. Don't! I don't ya! Lester, the thing's in the prototype. I'm going home to watch the keynote. Teabag time, my friend! Lester, did you hear me? Are you playing that game? Yeah, yeah, sorry, the phone is rigged. Now, what's your problem? You don't like shooters? They're all the same. Besides, you know me. I'm a movie guy. Classic Vinewood. Classic Vinewood ended 30 years ago. Now it's just superheroes, romantic comedies, and remakes, none of which interest me. Hey, I believe this country can still make interesting movies. There's no better way to define American life than a two-hour plot in which the hero looks good and defeats evil. Ah, uh, whatever you say. Enjoy yesterday. Anyway, just call the device after he's unveiled it, and then we'll talk. That does not sound good. Why am I calling this device? I really need to change my clothes. I look absurd. guy in America. You all disgust me! America loves you. You are in the final. Recorded live from the Vinewood Bowl. Who will win it all? Who will humiliate themselves in front of the world? Find out tonight on Fame or Shame, the finals. Now, please welcome your host, Laszlo. Shame. Completely original television. Something you've never seen before. We've got desperados performing. We've got has-beens judging them. We've got an anodyne metrosexual holding everything together. We are down to the top acts. It's the finals! Yeah! And here are our fame or shame judges. Let's introduce, you love him, I love him, ladies and gentlemen, Hugh Harrison! Woo! This is amazing that this whole thing is in here. Has been. Um, Hugh, I'd save the venom for the axe. They're not even out yet. You have a stylist. What's he dressed you as? What do they call this look? Is that like morgue chic? <laughs> gay romp. That it is. Two gays, one cup. <laughs> look at you. Ladies and gentlemen, Anita Mendoza! <laughs> Give the guy a break. Guy or gay? Oh my so God. Deep in the closet, his friends call him Mothball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Listen, why are you so fascinated with my sexuality? Are you even really British? Of course. I'm from uh, Staffordshire, Berg on uh, Sea, mate. <laughs> okay. Right. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Imran Shanoa! <laughs> Imran, you're, you're awfully quiet. Like, normally by now you're throwing refreshing sponsor beverages at me. I've been meditating, Laszlo. Well, try not to do it on live TV, all right? You're, you're putting America to sleep. In my silence, a great god came to me and asked me a question. Why does the metrosexual one dress like such a turd? <laughs> Hey, I'm not the one who cares about his performance tonight, all right? I've already won. It's fame or shame. We're all friends here. Friends who slightly loathe each other and say nasty things during contract renegotiations. And yes, 
Before you ask, this is a face brand watch. Face, official chronograph of fame or shame. Fantastic, Laszlo. That reminds me, I'm just going to have a junk energy drink. Junk, the official energy drink of fame <laughs> or shame. Really? I wanted a nice can of refreshing Sprunk. Sprunk, the official soft drink of fame or shame. Can I mention that I bang with Felisa? So I've started paying for everything. Felisa, the official credit card of fame or shame. Excellent. I love it. Subtle organic sponsor tie-ins. Nice. <laughs> Unlike your hair, you annoying poop. <laughs> <laughs> of the accent and the incredibly witty line. Oh, yes. Well, the British, overweight, rainy rednecks who are always trying to sound smart. All right, let's get down to it. Enough of this nonsense. Tonight, in association with Long Bank, here are some of Hugh's greatest moments from the season just to fill some time. You are absolutely awful. Almost as bad as Laszlo. That like having my balls sucked by an elderly orangutan. And I'm not Laszlo, so that wouldn't be a lot of fun for me, would it? I hope, I really do hope and pray that you die a painful death. Immediately after Laszlo, I'm losing the will to live here. You really, truly, you're awful. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. I can't say it enough. I will say it again, awful. Awful. What are you doing? Uh, oh, God, it's getting wild. Stop, Jesus Christ. We've got a great night of television for you. God damn it. You fucking... Oh. <laughs> okay, so, real quick. First of all, like, I, I can't believe how much effort Rockstar put into this to have this entire thing. It's like when you're in Red Dead and you and you watch the shows. It's it's incredible. Um, so this game was made in 2013, and some of the like homophobic jokes that are being made and thrown around here at that time we actually saw that a lot it was acceptable for that kind of thing to just be thrown around in that way and it's a type of representation that when allowed to be on that platform like that finds its way into the general social psyche where you're seeing like indications of a person's potential sexuality beyond being heterosexual as being less than, as being a problem, as something to be made fun of. And if you're a person who is gay, who's watching this, like if it was like, if you were actually in this time, you're watching this, Think of how horrible that would feel to know that in front of millions of people, people can make jokes about your sexuality and the fact that you're gay as if you're less than, as if that's something that's worthy of absolute ridicule by people in positions of power in the show, but also just in social hierarchies. It makes you second guess how out you want to be. Makes you ask yourself, if you're a kid, is it okay that I'm gay? I see everybody making fun of it. When we say that something is stupid or bad, we call it gay. Which back in the er late, early, late 2000s, that shit was said all the time. This is what contributes to overt homophobia. But is also what contributes to a person's own internalized homophobia. Have we come a long way since 2013? Yeah, representation is way better now than it used to be. But this is a really clear 
reflection of what things were like at the time. Is it satirized a bit here because it's GTA? Yes, but this these are the type this is why representation is so important. Because you don't often realize the effect these messages have on you as a human. These things get dumped into the back of your brain. Where you see maybe somebody who's gay in your own environment, and because all of the representation you've seen is that that's something to be made fun of, something to be afraid of, something to have disdain for, you operate off of that. Even if you want to tell yourself you're unbiased, you go for it. But your biases aren't always even conscious biases. They're injected into you by what you consume. So millions of people are watching this and seeing that that's okay. The other thing that I want to say as it relates to this is we're seeing this, like, La not this Laszlo guy, the, the, the main judge guy who obviously is supposed to be the Simon Cowell of the show. Constantly jab at Laszlo for his sexuality. And there is a phenomenon that is still common, was particularly common back in the day, so to speak, where one of the ways that people can distance themselves from a perception that they themselves hold an identity that is societally seen as not okay or less than is to pin yourself or polarize yourself against that. So this judge, by consistently making fun of Laszlo for his sexuality, makes it appear as if there's no possible way that he could be gay. Why would you make fun of somebody like that so harshly if you yourself were gay? Wouldn't you have empathy? Well, internalized homophobia is the result of the rampant, terrible representation of that sexuality is something that when people would internalize it and then experience their own sexual drives that maybe weren't heterosexual, because it wasn't safe to disclose that, because it was seen as being less than, people would overcompensate by harming people and, and to the point of even lawmaking at times, harming people that are hold a similar identity that they have and have suppressed because they don't want people to encroach on the idea that maybe that's an identity that they hold. And I'm not saying that the judge is gay. If he is, that's not a problem. But in this time, he might perceive it as a problem and thus try to distance himself from that aspect of his identity by making fun of others because then there's no way that you would suspect it. That's a phenomenon that happens frequently and is very real. I'm sure there may even be some folks who are watching this video who might connect with that. Right, Victoria? I know. We've come a long way. He really does love me, yeah. Or at least he tries to every night in my dressing room. Oh my God. Come on. Please, all right. I, I was drunk. I mean, you? I'd rather finger that fat Irish singer we voted off last week. Well, the tabloids say you actually did. What? Had sex in exchange for advancing her to the final. Oh dear. No, no, no. Please, please. Who listens to fat people? Or, or the tabloids? I mean, they're all so desperate. Um, anyway, uh, let's get on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, favor shame, our next contestant, William Angio! <laughs> I am so excited. It's like when you sing dream. I feel like you are singing straight to me. Because I am. <laughs> All right. All right. Come on. We got, we got a show to do. All right, Hugh. All right. Well, uh, we're glad you made it to the next round. Uh, we really want you to take your performance to the next level and prove the doubters wrong who are saying that me and everyone connected to the show 
have ruined pop music because we have not. All right, and anyway, uh, be rude to Laszlo, he really likes it. You, you really suck, dude. Wait a second. Love you. How could I suck? I host a talent show, all right? I'm on national television and I get paid a lot, all right? And, and I get chicks. Here, smell. No, God. Uh, all right? Oh, so that was a sandwich. Smell. No, I oh, okay. smell your She wasn't even that fat. All right. So oh I'm my not God. Gay. All right. Whatever. Let's get to it. Okay. Fat phobia too, man. I mean, seriously. I, I know this might be uncomfortable to watch. It is uncomfortable to watch. It should be uncomfortable to watch. Watching this in 2022 is brutal. Watching this in 2013. <laughs> We don't just escape this stuff, friends, just because it's 2022. In 2013, I was 23 years old, but there were a lot of people that were 13 years old. Hell, that were seven years old. And this didn't just happen in Grand Theft Auto. This ha this happened everywhere. This is this is absolutely a reflection of reality. Okay? This stuff sinks into your bones. In a way that so many of us don't realize. If you ever wonder where people's biases come from, it's not often from the overt stuff. It's from this stuff. It's from the fact that this was okay. Is some of this developmental? Yes. Do we, do we need to get to a point where we started to realize that these things were harmful and do better? Yes. But when we, when we talk about progressing, we're talking about moving into a space where some of these things are not represented as one-dimensionally as they are. These jokes that are being made here would land way more effectively if they could be placed into a context where there was more diverse and realistic representation. Okay. It's why it's easier to rag on the majority group because the representation is better. Like, I as a white dude can take a joke real easy. White, straight, I, I tick all the boxes of privilege. It's really easy for me to take a joke because my identity is represented beautifully all over the place. You could rag on me really with no, with no consequence to me because of how diverse the representation is. So it's easier for me to take a joke because we can put it in that context. If you're gay in 2013, this is the majority representation of the shit that you're seeing. So now these jokes aren't funny because there's not a wider context to put it in. As you diversify representation, as you make it more real, you can get back to having some jokes. Because in reality, good comedy means everybody's on the table. But the problem is we have to take in these wider dynamics before we can actually inject humor in a way that's actually going to be meaningful and taken as humor. So there's really a big conversation to be had here as the result of us watching this show and really seeing this glimpse into the past because for a long time, this is the kind of stuff that we saw and we just, there was nothing there was just no batting an eye at it. It wasn't brought to our attention until people who legitimately are harmed by things like this were like, hey, hi, this is really problematic. This, this causes issues for me in my life that this is the representation of, my, of me. This is not accurate representation. And that's really all any of us ever wants in the media in front of millions of eyeballs is accurate representation. It gets closer to the diversity of subjective experience. Okay. I am so desperate to hear you sing. I mean, last time you were fantastic. Uh, so you're gonna do uh, a Love Fist classic, right? Uh, no, it's from one of Jess' solo records, which I'm gonna improvise. All right, and if he sings, I don't want to get DMCA'd, <laughs> oh so we're God, gonna end you guys it here. Are so lame. Out. No, no Germany, I'm watching weeks. Famer Shame. Oh, the fucking tits. Give me that. Yes, I am. All right, it's favor shame for William Angio. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Jay Norris to the stage.
Hey, this company has come a long way since we started it in my parents' pool house in East Carroll. Today, you're about to witness a new phase, full-on weapons-grade red alert world domination. We have put a billion people's private data in the public domain, and we have milked every penny we could in the process. Gotta love the self-awareness. We have one of the youngest workforces in the world. An average age of only 14.4 years? That's not just impressive, it's revolutionary! Peak pride populate. <laughs> right here. We are about to make the next step. Prepare to witness the future. The Life Invader mobile device. Yes, we have invented something no one else has ever thought of. A small, personal, computerized device. Now you're going to be able to stay docked 24-7. On the bus, you can dock. On the subway, stay docked. You can be docked at home. And at the same time, you're docking with some kids at the public pool. Hold on a second. I think someone's trying to dock with me. Hello? Oh! Oh, Jesus! Whoa! No, 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 Let's... No, 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 no. Whoa! Lest, that was heavy. Are you watching the news? I don't have to. I'm watching the markets. I'll be trading pure alpha till close. All right. Hey, about that other thing. You know the score. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Put on a suit, look somewhat professional, and meet me at my warehouse off the LS freeway. Oh, uh, and I'm about to email you a link for the exchange. You can put in some trades of your own. Uh, I'm trying to stay off the day trading. Uh, but maybe I'll take a look. Wow. Uh, well. Uh, that is, um... Okay. So... We just, we just killed somebody. I know we've killed plenty of people in this game so far, but we just, we just legitimately, we just killed that dude and lots of people were watching it. We just traumatized the masses. Oh my God. Yeah, I thought maybe we were going to like sabotage it. I got bigger shit to deal with right now. I love you, son. Whatever you say, Dad. <laughs> uh. No, I need uh. What? I gotta wear a suit. Hey, absolutely. Okay. Unless you like know someone who go out for a drink with me, uh, I do get kind of lonely sometimes. <sighs> All righty, Lester. Uh, you, you, what's next now, bud?
Our unconditional loyalty hath killed a man. So what's kind of okay? So what's kind of interesting about this? From Lester's perspective, I actually don't know that I think it was a good idea to tell Michael or to not tell Michael what he was going to do. If there's that much trust between the two of them. Then you would think that, like, Lester would say, like, look, man, I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. And I, I, maybe you're not going to like this, but you, this phone call, when you call it, is going gonna, is gonna to blow his face off. Now, he may have calculated that as, well, if I tell Michael that that's what's going to happen, maybe he's going to say no. But Lester also had a ton of leverage in that moment. The reason that I think it's a weird miscalculation for Lester is that he, Michael not expecting that to happen could completely throw Michael off his game. I mean, he, he could potentially traumatize Michael. He was essentially leveraging the idea that Michael has seen some shit in the past, and so this would be totally easy to assimilate into his psyche of things that he's already done that are horrible. And maybe he's right. But I don't know that that's a risk you want to take. I actually think that, like, if the bad thing's going to happen, you want to know that Michael committed to it regardless of what it is. And I'm not advocating for him killing this guy, but, like, you know what I mean. And also making sure that he's not thrown off here. Because now how do we trust anything that Lester tells us to do, right? Like, it breaks down that trust. So, to me, it's really a bit of a miscalculation on his relationship between himself and Michael. Like, that was pretty extreme. And, I mean, who knows what his thought process was. Maybe it was to shock Michael back into realizing, like, if we're going to get back in the game, you have to be ready to do this stuff. I just don't know that that's the way that you go about it. Maybe because Michael was out of the game for so long, didn't want to take any chances on him to do the job. On him to do the job. I mean, maybe. I just, if he's back in the game, there needs to be trust there. And to me, that's more of a violation of trust more than anything else. Like, blind loyalty, as we talked about in the Red Dead run, blind loyalty is not something you really want to push for in situations like this. Like, we need good, constant, clear communication, informed consent on what we're doing, even if it's this messy shit. Michael, it might be a good time to start making some moves on the stock market. Here's a link to the market to get you started. Buy low, sell high. I'm just... I, again, I could be completely wrong. Maybe Michael's fine with this. Maybe Michael and Lester are totally cool with this. This is how they roll. There's no issue here. It just really seems like a miscalculation to me on Lester's part. I don't know that that's how I would have gone about this. I mean, yeah, Michael didn't seem, like, overly shocked, but what a risk he took. The hell is this place? Garment factory. I needed a job that didn't require me to do anything apart from, uh, paying taxes. <laughs> okay, listen. What do you got? The Holy Grail. The Union Depository. Now, they say it cannot be hit. Has it been yet? I just owe some Mexican hood a couple million bucks because I wrecked his girlfriend's house. I don't need to go crazy here. Which Mexican? Martin Madrazo. He's not supposed to be very nice. Oh, when I met him, he was charming. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, um, let's see. Either we hit a bank in the sticks or we do a store. Which do you like? Well, <clears throat> store's usually easier. 
but I gotta make a big take. Ugh, well, gems it is, then. Let's go to Vangelico, buy ourselves an engagement ring. Oh, we're gonna need a crew. I can round up some of the old guys. There are no old guys. Moses, uh, ironically, he found Jesus. Uh, all those Irish crazies, they mostly just disappeared. That crew from the south, they all went down. There was uh, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but... Nico! I love that. All right. Well, we're gonna need a crew. You got any contacts in LS or not? I've been working with someone, but they're too unpredictable. I'll have to reach out to some other guys. Okay. Lester controls the environment. It's okay, this is making more sense now. Lester controls the environment by being cryptic. He keeps things on a need-to-know basis. He has us in a constant state of, insecur of insecurity and not quite knowing what's going on as a way to control. He has all the information. We have some of it. It makes him necessary. If Lester gives off all the information, then maybe we don't need him because we can make decisions on our own. So in order for Lester to be the kingpin or to have a role in this situation... He has to get all the information. He has to think it through. He has to be very confident about it so that other people don't doubt him. And then he has to be careful with what information he provides because he holds all the cards and they only have some of it. So thus, he is needed. He is important. He gets his share of the take. Pretty smart. He got what he needed from, from Michael not knowing what was going on. So I, I will say, like, he, he did benefit from Michael not having any idea what was going to happen because if Michael did doubt it, if Michael did come up with another plan of how to sabotage them that didn't involve killing Jay, then then Lester maybe doesn't benefit as much. So he his, his, his regulation of the flow of information is, I think, a real point of power for him. People don't just unlearn to kill people, right? Like, I mean, you see it in the military all the time. Maybe it was a test to see if he was capable, but to see if he was something he really wanted to do. Again, maybe I'm wrong. I think, though, the difference, Ichabum, is killing somebody intentionally is different than killing somebody not knowing that you're about to do it. So if Lester wanted to ensure that Michael is still capable of killing Michael having the information that that's what he was going to do would give him way more information than if he surprises Michael into it. Because Michael could, if Michael's really been doing the work in therapy, Michael could cognitively go into a space where he says, well, I didn't do that. I didn't know that that was coming. I did do it, but that kill was not my intention. I thought I was just sabotaging his phone. Whereas if Lester says to him, no, you're going to kill him. This is, you're, you're planting an explosive in that device. And when you hit that call button and he answers it, the phone's going to blow up. Now, if Michael hits that button, he knows that he is the one pulling the trigger of the gun. There's no deniability of the fact that he was the one that had the intention there. So I don't think, again, that's why I say I don't think that was a good way for Lester to go about it. Because even if he was testing Michael's willingness to kill, that's not how you do it. Because Lester, Michael could say that Lester killed him. And that he didn't have all the information. And that he wouldn't have done it if he had all the information. The way he has his home, it would make sense that he wants to know everything that's going on and what's to stay in the loop. Absolutely, Dab. Absolutely. I'm going to use this as an opportunity before I get in the car to just say I really appreciate all of you being here. If you're here for the live stream on Twitch, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day or night to watch me live and to interact with me or to lurk. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for continuing to support the channel via YouTube. I really do appreciate all of you. Thank you for supporting my content. If you think people could benefit from watching this content and learn something from it, please share it. Tell people about it. It really does make a huge difference. We're going to Little Portola. Little Portola, huh? All right. Your FIB buddies, they uh, know you're back in business. FIB buddies? What are you talking about? I checked out the WPP thing. Doesn't look like any WITSEC program I'm aware of. Well, for starters, they, uh, 
They don't put witnesses up in multi-million dollar mansions in Rockford Hills. Well, maybe they thought this would be the best cover. And most witnesses don't transfer five-figure sums into a particular FIB agent's bank account every month. Of course, the money gets moved around and washed through a number of fronts, but the trail is there. Deposits and withdrawals, the same sum every month. Agent Dave Norton, white middle-aged divorcee, unremarkable career, except for one incident, the shooting of a notorious stick-up man, Michael Town. Yeah, 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 all right. Lester, I'm very impressed. Look, uh, we can talk about this another time. Uh, take these glasses. My eyesight's fine. They're fitted with a camera and a radio relay. I'm gonna run the operation from the car while you're in the store getting what we need. Ooh, all right. So we're canvassing the store. This will be interesting. We about to do a robbery? To heist it up? Here we are. Oh, I look. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Enter the glasses hidden camera. All right. In we go. Is this... I don't think this is the right space. Where... Going around back? Oh, I am. Okay. You reading me? Mm-hmm. Okay. We need shots of the security features, the alarm system, ventilation, cameras. What, well, sir? Ooh, baby. Angelico. Thank you, sir. The alarm keypad is on the left when you come in, on the wall by the side door. Arms, vents, cameras, remember? Glasses are live, shoot away. Ah, okay, that's their alarm. Uh, can you get me an air vent in one of the cameras? Great, you got the security camera and the ventilation in that shot. Good work, now speak to the assistant and see if there's anything else we need to know. Hey, beautiful. Oof. Gross. I need to pick up a little something for the woman in my life. Well, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm sure we can help you. Tell me about her. What's her taste? Cheap. Thank God. This ain't my wife we're talking about. <laughs> Dude, Michael. All right. I don't know. Chill, buddy. I don't want to spend too much. I'm thinking maybe 10 grand. Our rings start at 8. Our pendants start at 12. All right. So these things built the last, or am I just paying for the Vangelico logo here? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We use perfect clarity jewels. 18 karat gold, 950 platinum. Nothing but the best. All right. Unreal to me that people pay that kind of money for jewels. I'm going to take a look around. Think about it. Come back to you, baby. Don't go anywhere. I understand. Okay. Thank you, Ugh. sir. You got it. Ugh. Come back to me. Michael. Have a wonderful day. Thank so, you. We good? Almost. I need to get eyes on the roof of the building. See where the ventilation comes out. Let's speed this up. We don't want to draw attention. Yeah, don't draw attention by sprinting away from the store towards the car where a guy's just chilling. Drive around the block and look for a way up to the roof. Access point to the rooftop? It's not sexual harassment if I like hey, it. You. Hi, darling. 
Look, there. Some construction. Yeah, if they're gutting the place, I might be able to get to the roof. I'm just gonna leave you in the middle of the street, Lester. Hope you're okay with that, buddy. Please excuse us whilst we touch ourselves up. <laughs> so, you keep up with the old crew? You know, after your death slash disappearance, there wasn't much holding us together. Yeah. You see him at all? After the incident? I kept tabs on him for a while. Needed to, uh, know that he didn't blame me. Yeah, where'd he go? North, south, east, west, wherever there were liquor stores to turn over and hitchhikers to disappear. Where did they bury him? They buried him? Not as far as I know. He's probably a John Doe then, right? No, no, avoid I saw a ladder. Climb up it and see if you can get to the roof. What do you think? OD? Shootout? Maybe just a car crash, right? Anonymous charred remains on the highway? They only knew what a sick puppy they had on their hands. Hey, are we gonna make that deadline? Alright. Hopefully there's no construction workers here. I'm just the foreman in my suit. I'm on the roof. I need to know where the air coming out of those vents in Vangelico originates. There should be a unit above the store. Go to the high ground and take some shots. Alrighty. Hey, I see the vents. Yeah, I'm looking at the relay. Can you get any higher? I've pulled up a satellite image. It looks like the highest point is on the northwest side. Get a shot from there. Can do, Lester, old buddy, old pal. See me at the club tomorrow. It's like a big box on the roof. No, no, the air conditioning roof unit. We need to know where those vents come out. It's like a big box on the roof. No, no, the air conditioning roof unit. Lester. We need to know where those vents come out. I'm do I'm doing my best, brother. I'm not an HVAC guy. I'm on top of it. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, now I get it. This is I'm I'm not equipped for this kind of thing, man. I'm not Uh-oh. Am I going to hurt myself if I jump from here? Sure am. Get out of here. Let's hurry this up, Michael. Oh my god, Lester. Just chill, buddy. I just climbed all the way to the top of a roof via a construction site. And I gotta go all the way to the other side. If you want me to help you, you gotta be a little bit patient. Alright. Seems to me like it would have been a better idea to change clothes before I did this part, so I'm not the same guy in the suit that was just in the diamond store. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Here, okay. take your glasses back. Let's go back to the garment factory. I called ahead and told him to start setting up the information. Baby, this is gonna be intense. So, what did you see? 
Well, nothing that'll cause undue complications. Yeah, it looked like a simple setup. Look! Cameras broadcasting to a remote server. We might be able to wipe them remotely. Security guard on the door. He won't want to die for rich assholes to rub his nose in it. Uh, good. Alarm system's linked to the door lock. Uh, we'll get a good window. Someone talented hacks it. Anything else? Well, the uh, more valuable merchandise is in the cabinets in the center of the store, by the register. So I'd start there. Mm. Glass in the cabinets wasn't bulletproof. Means you can smash them easy enough, but the stones will be in the safe at night. So, we go in when it's open, then? Right. Once we melt down the gold, recut the rocks, that's an okay score. <laughs> yeah, shame we can't go in after hours, man. Those vents look promising. Uh, might be able to flip that another way. I'm listening. Wait till we get back. About the crew. Yeah? There's this kid who's been helping me. Maybe we could cut him in. I don't work with amateurs. He ain't an amateur. Or if he is, he's a gifted amateur about to turn pro. He's a good kid, Lester. You know what they say. It's your funeral. One of them, at least. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Franklin. Get our boy Franklin involved. See, but even there with Lester, right? Skepticism, but then trust. You know, if you say so. Can we go? Here are the photos. Thank you. Uh, the workers have their uses. Okay, let me set this up. <laughs> nice to see the methods haven't changed. Well, we gotta figure out what we're doing somehow. All the crews, the rolls, prep work. Go and leave evidence behind on a hard drive. So yeah, the uh, Methods don't change. Right. Not for a pro. <laughs> well, mapping out the options, uh, showing you all the angles. That's my area of professional expertise. But making decisions, that is your domain, my friend. Here. And there's two ways I see of doing this. We go in smart, or we go in loud and dumb. Remember the vents? If we're gonna be smart, we pump a little knockout gas through the air system, then hit the cabinets while everyone's out. You'll have to source the gas, of course, but crowd control won't slow you down, and that might improve the take. The cover is pest control, so no one will look twice when you're wearing gas masks. It means getting a pest control van, though. You go in dumb, and you'll need your, uh, famous way with people and four carbine rifles. But we can't buy them and risk them getting traced. No, 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 we've gotta find some in circulation. It's awkward, it's, uh, <laughs> real awkward, but this is the gun favored by LS. PD tactical team, so one of their vans is probably a good place to look. A hacker can disable the cameras. The length of time depends on their ability. The alarm will be operating on the same window. The exit strategy is more or less the same for both options. The driver you pick will, of course, source some bikes. You come out of the store and make your way through the new subway tunnel they're digging off the Del Perro freeway. You lose the cops in there and meet a truck in the LS River. All right, I want my guy Franklin on the getaway. He can handle a bike. All right, if you vouch for him, I'll take the risk. So how do you want to do this? Run in through the front door or try to play it smart? Oh, we're definitely going smart. Ah, you've grown wise and cautious in your old age. Okay, select personnel with that in mind. As ever, the better they are, the bigger the cut. Now the driver, they'll source the bikes, lead you out through the tunnels. Eddie Toe. Now you can count on him to get you out of a spot. Guns. Now we're hoping to keep quiet, so this guy shouldn't make much difference. Ah, Norm. Came across as uh, a bit of an idiot, but could be useful. Hacker. Back office, but 
This is the person who will determine how long you get inside. Harris! <laughs> Good. Feminine touch. She'll be able to find any back doors they got. If you're happy, I'll start making the arrangements. Yeah, let's do this right. If you're gonna do it right, you pay for it to be done right. Great. Uh, I'll do some research on a pest control van and the knockout gas, and I'll be in touch. Oh, yes. Huh? Good. Good. I'll call you when everything's ready. You'll need to pitch it to the guys. Whoa, what? My rep don't count for nothing no more. You're a dead man, Michael. I'll call you. I'm surprised Lester's not the hacker, too. What's up? Hey, man, it's me, Michael. What's going on? Listen, um, I gotta get hold of the money for that house we pulled down, so I'm getting a crew together for, uh, you can guess. The pay will be awful, and the risk will be high, but you might learn something if you're interested. Man, that's not exactly a great sales pitch, dog, but I guess I gotta start somewhere. Thank you. Maybe one day you can put together your own deals, your own jobs. So... There's still some preparation I gotta do. Sit tight for a while. My buddy Lester will get in touch with the details. All right. Man, Franklin is just like willing to just do whatever. He doesn't even think twice. Back in 2002, there was a hostage crisis. Russian police pumped the theater full of knockout gas. As you can imagine, it didn't end well. So the idea of using a smaller area never sat well with me. Yeah, who's this? It's Ricky from Life Invader. I know you're the bro who deactivated Jay, bro. <laughs> oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Did you get my pal? number? What you do is your business, bro. Anyway. Jay really got a big head once people started calling him a god. Guess you proved he wasn't one. They reintegrated my team in Burundi after the design got signed off. And now, my shares ain't worth dick. Sorry about that. I need work. And I thought maybe you could provide. I mean, I'm smart enough to track you down, aren't I? I guess you are. Hey, I'll be in touch if anything comes up. So he'd be a decent, uh, he'd be a decent tech guy. All right. Obviously, he doesn't give a shit about what I did to Jay. I am impressed that he found me. So I'm guessing, I guess we just chill for a little bit here and drive around and wait for Lester to call. As I don't have anything else to do. Let's go see what, uh, let's go see what Franklin, well, no, wait. Stock trading, not interested. Not interested. Let's call my wife. Let's see what happens if I call her. Amanda, it's me. So, you want to try to reconnect? Sure. Come pick me up. Well, if for any reason you can't make it, let me know, okay? I'm on my way. All right, let's make an effort. The hell is she doing out here? All right, is it easy for someone to get paranoid over anything? Easier, hard for a person to become paranoid or something? Can it be anything? Uh, it's a hard one for me to answer, Titan. There's a lot of contextual factors that contribute to that.
talking about how well people mesh and work together. Do you think a team of Michael Franklin, Jackie Wells, and V would play out well? Or do you think Michael's professionalism and Jackie's ambition would clash? That's a hard one. I don't know, Tiggity. I think it could probably work. But the, the most important thing is you gotta you have to build rapport. You have to, like, actually figure out how to... Like, it takes time. You don't just automatically have chemistry, necessarily, just because you want to have it. Like, we know enough about them to know whether they would work, but we'd actually have to see them interact in order to know whether it would work. And I have, in all my years now as being a therapist, I have stopped assuming that any configurations of people would work until I see them make the effort. It would blow your mind how often there are people you would think wouldn't work well together who do work well together, and people who you think would be great don't. All right, Amanda. There you are. Let's go. Movie, tennis, and drinks. Let's go get a drink. Well, you. Well, Michael. Do I? It's good to hang out. Spend more time together, you know? Glad you think so. But listen, Michael, I really need you to cut back on your drinking. It's starting to affect more than our sex life. I don't drink that much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Just on the days of the week that end with the letter Y. <laughs> That's good. I mean, come on. We both know you've turned into a bitter fat slob who last year wet the bed. I want that bitter thin slob I married back. Yeah, so he can watch you bang the pool boy. I drink to dull the pain. Mm. <laughs> That's nice, dear. Really nice. Oh, boy. Okay. This is a really good way to get a read on where they're at. Okay. So, if the reason that Amanda... had an affair is because she's not feeling connected to Michael and she wants him to make an effort. She has to realize and be mindful of the fact that this is Michael making an effort. He called you. You agreed to join. By agreeing to join instead of setting a boundary with me, it suggests to me that this is a consensual engagement. So when you get in the car, and you immediately get on my ass, that is a punishment for an attempt to engage with you. Don't say yes to hanging out with me if you're not prepared to hang out with me and try to make the effort. The most meaningful thing that could have ever happened here for Michael would be for her to say I really appreciate you making the effort I have felt disconnected from you I'm glad we have a chance to hang out and to make this work now I'm sure that there are very legitimate things that she has beef about if Amanda is frustrated about the way in which Michael is drinking that is a legitimate concern it is okay for her to hold space with that concern Immediately when you get in the car for this, not the time. If she was to say, I would, I don't want to go out to a bar and drink because I'm, I've been uncomfortable with your drinking and I would rather have a sober engagement. That's perfectly reasonable. In fact, we're going to switch to tennis because of what she said. But you have got to be mindful in these engagements about the ways in which you reinforce or punish certain behaviors. Throwing haymakers immediately when you get the door cracked is not the way to open the door. It's a way to get it shut. Her needs are important. So are Michael's. They can problem solve this effectively if they're willing to actually sit down and do this in a meaningful way, validate, listen, coming at each other this hard immediately not really going to be an ideal way to do this because now we're off on the wrong foot. Now we're off on a hostile fit, uh, 
We're also on a hostile foot. We're going to both be defensive. I don't like it. You know, Michael also is a, is not... Uh, he's Michael doesn't get off scot-free here either. You know, Michael could be more open to listening and saying, like, hey, I want to know more about what led you to do that. Like, what is it that you're specifically unhappy about? I want to figure I want to figure out and learn more about your experience of this relationship. He could do that too. There both of these people could do better in these interactions. So do not mistake my rhetoric here for saying that Amanda is entirely at fault or that Michael is entirely at fault. Yeah, let's just take it on head on here. Maybe if I engage in a thing that you enjoy, you'll be less likely to do it with other people. You'll see it as something you can connect with me on. I hope you brought your tennis clothes. Yes, he is, Ichabum. They both are. Use A and D to aim your shots. Okay. For a high bounce and shorter flight time, top spin. Top spin shots have a red marker. This is unbelievable. We can go three sets. Let's go. Ours might be a marriage in name only, but at least we still got tennis. We'll always have tennis until I can't stand the sight of you. I know, My boss told up giving me all the Oh! That's where the money went. Oh, I should do here. Hold on. Dr. Mick Casino is open. Can you serve already? Put your votes in. There we go. I realize that y'all can't fully see the scoreboard, so let me turn the overlay off here for a second. All right, here we go. Uh, Titan, those are hard questions for me to answer, dude, because they're not uh like uh, you'd have to give you have to be more specific with that. I don't really know how to answer that. Let's go. You really are desperate, aren't you? Yeah. I'm not going easy on her here. I ain't washed up yet. All right. Amanda's on the serve. Ooh. Oh, she she's going to be pissed. Look at that backhand. <laughs> I just saw your charity warrior skin on Stream Raiders to support the Trevor Project. Very nice. Yeah, on Thursday, I'm going to be with the juice. I'm excited about it. We got a nice little event coming. Jeez, 
Jesus, mind my heart. Oh. Another few points like that, and I'm back on track. Damn. What time is that going to be? Uh, Juice, what's our time on that? Is it is it noon Pacific again? Oh, shit. I went too early. Noon Pacific? Yep, there we go. Beautiful. This is your court, Amanda. Oof. Own it. Oof. Oof. Oh no, I did three sets. Oops. I shouldn't have done three sets. That's my bad. Yeah, there we go. Deuce, baby. Not bad mm. for a fat old fool like me. Oh, I should have gone left. There we go. Yeah, she dove. <laughs> Holy shit. She's playing hardcore here. Oh, that she's done. Well, at least I hope you learned something. Boom, baby. Ah, let's see if the old man still got it. Killing it. Take a look at that. Killing it. Uh, 12 Pacific would be 3 o'clock Eastern, Panda. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Point. Oh Again, let's go. This is a better tennis game than like most PC tennis games. I've actually never played Grand Theft Auto Tennis before. Yes! Still got the old magic. We got are we doing five games in a set? Holy shit. Uh three sets was the wrong choice. Dominating. Put a little music on in the background while we do this. Jeez. I see why she took lessons. She's she's not she's not very good. <laughs> yeah. I ain't washed up yet. Uh, you might want to step back just a little bit. I was worried your knees would give out. On points like that, I worry for your health. Oh! Come on, Michael. There we go. What a volley. 
My what a volley. God. We're doing this. We're only Send doing this to one set. I'm not doing three sets. Domination. Just utter domination. Shit. Oh, baby. Well, at least I hope you learned something. Wait a minute. Are we really doing seven games? Are we doing seven game sets? Oh my god. Yeah, no way. Or six, I guess. Boom. She stands no chance. What's up, Bumbler? No chance, man. She's gotten what, like one? Go to the right. I'll try to talk it through. Get her moved over to the left here. Back to the left. Keep her over there. Wait till she goes over here. Down the line. Yep. And I'm going to return it to the left. Keep her over there. Go cross court. Go back across. She's got, yeah, no chance, man. Still I mean, it's got the old magic. This easy peasy. All, over it. all right, there's the set. So it's six. Okay. Oh, there we go. She goes against the net. Good. We're gonna serve it up. Let's see where she goes. All right, so we're gonna take it to the left. Keep it to the left. Keep her on the forehand, and then go across court. Nice. Hell yeah. See, all right. So we, she brings it. Okay. Keep her on the left on the forehand. Go across court. Back across court because she had to put too much in it. Yep. Good luck, pal. Oh, he calls his wife pal. Right on target. To the right. Keep her on the backhand. Left. Ooh, she forehand. Stay forehand. Cross court. No chance. I saw a talk that was yet. about not basing expectations on people based on labels because it causes prejudice. Are there ways to avoid these kinds of thought patterns? Is it something we need to be aware of? You're always biased. Always biased. Be aware of your biases. Understand the way that your biases affect the way that you interact with certain groups of people so that you can do better and so that you can be more in control of how you interact with them instead of reacting to your biases. Oh, take a look at that. right keep her on the backhand to the right one more time backhand cross court oh. not bad for a fat old i was away so i might not have heard your responses being cynical or nihilistic or doom or negatively affect no mental health it depends on the person uh cynicism can be healthy because it can be protective uh nihilism can also be healthy uh can also be healthy depending on which form of nihilism you're going to take on but it depends. It's an individual thing. There's no generalization that can be made with that type. Yeah, hybrid. I mean, uh, biases are important to understand and to accept. Well, not to I accept, but to like to, to have insight into. Oh, I'm feeling good about it gives this you more life. control over the way that you bring yourself into interactions. It also allows you to do whatever work you need to do to be 
better in interactions, which often means diversifying the representation that you consume. And realizing too, I think an important point that I've I've made many times on stream before is come everybody no you come pressure. across You're bound to lose either way. has the same level quiet on of me, complex sex. God damn it, has the same level of complex past that you do that has led up to that given moment and you have no way of knowing all of it. How do you go about opening up to family members about issues you're going through when the fact that you're going through those issues put you in a category of person the family member has othered and possibly dehumanized to some degree? So that question isn't asking about how you bring up issues. That question is asking, how do I get people to listen to me? You can't control that. The only thing you can control is how you bring things up, what you say, how you say it. You have to make the judgment of whether it's safe to say it to those people. Uh, I don't believe people are entitled to know your issues. And if you're, if you've had enough experiences Still with people that they've shown you over time that they're not willing to hear you out or listen or engage meaningfully with you, then it may mean that you need to go elsewhere for that support. But you can't control other people and how they hear you. You can only control what you say and how you say it. And those questions are always interesting to me because you're trying to control for something that really like, I mean, you can certainly influence the way certain people react to you based on how you bring things up, but you have to hold people accountable to their responses to you. Uh, I, I mean, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, but also give yourself the benefit of the doubt. Look at that. And understand what your limits are and where your boundaries need to be. You make it too easy, man. Shit, you make it too you know easy. It. This is good. This is a nice little point of conversation for all of us. By the way, I, I I appreciate you guys hanging in there and watching this tennis. I hope it's compelling in some kind of way. I don't know. I mean, tennis is an exciting sport to watch, in my opinion. I ain't washed up yet. Watching the Australian Open this year was incredible. Nadal, Nadal's <laughs> win on that. I stayed I up so late watching that. Into this bad boy. She's so predictable. I mean, it's... The floor is sparkly clean with how much you're wiping it with her, right? Like, oh man, yes, is you're looking real good right now. <laughs> I wish I could multitask like you. Are you going into detail with questions while kicking her ass? Yeah, hit me with questions. Let me. I'll talk. I'll talk about mental health while I smash this tennis match into oblivion. Not bad for a fat old fool like me. You have any good advice for handling a five-year-old? Oh God, I, that's a little too broad for me, Charlie. I mean, understanding most of their behaviors developmentally is a super important thing. But, I mean, I... Well, at least I hope what five-year-old are we talking about? I mean, that that's that's a little too hard for me to answer, friend. Sometimes it's hard to really acknowledge, for whatever reason, the fact that I have no control over how they'd ultimately go. So I'm currently trying to figure out what approach, is, if any, is worth it for me. Yeah, and that's an important endeavor. But remember, yeah, you control your engagement, you control your boundaries. I do a full Monaco race while doing a Q&A? Boy, that would be tough, Brian. That would be a hell of a challenge. Well, this is going to be, I think, match point. Because if I win this set, it's over. So, damn, Amanda. Come on. Come on Amanda. They're five. You don't. <laughs> I mean, you. so I will do my best to give maybe some general stuff. Like, so a five-year-old okay. is generally going to be operating in concrete operations. They don't understand abstraction. They mostly pay attention to what's immediately in front of their face. 
They understand things that they can see and tangibly manipulate. They don't understand big time abstract concepts. They can't hypothetically manipulate symbols, none of that stuff. So be very clear, be very direct, be very tangible in how you interact with five-year-olds. Also remember that your Still energy the is the mechanism magic. of reinforcement. I mean, come on. Absolutely, absolutely annihilated. Back in my suit. Drink some of that junk energy drink. I can't believe you won. I can. That was great. You gonna drop me or are we gonna do something else? I'm gonna drop you off. I got shit to go do. What's up, King? I am on Twitch for live streams uh, completely. Taking Amanda home, I assume. Yeah. All right. Well, that was a solid game of tennis. I actually really enjoyed that. Get the competitive juice is flowing. We both know this is doomed. What is? This marriage. It's a joke. I'm laughing inside. Okay. That's it. I don't even recognize you anymore, Amanda. I see, I look into your eyes. I see the shell of the woman I once married. And that's because the eyes that I have are shells of the man that I once was. We've lived a long life of lies, of not talking about things we needed to talk about. It's been really difficult. I haven't been fully honest with you. You haven't been honest with me. We've acted out to communicate to each other instead of communicating clearly and concisely. We haven't recognized when our brains are activated, when our past is coming to haunt us, when the things that we're interacting about aren't about what's happening in the moment. It's about what's happened leading up to that moment. We've both projected onto each other. We've both made assumptions about where the other one was coming from. We've both focused a lot more on how we've engaged with each other rather than how we've responded to each other. I, I mean, I'm at fault at that. That's that's my bad, Amanda. I, I haven't been very good about that. And there are times where I wish that you could have validated me too. I know, I know you're hurting. I know I haven't really lived up to what you were expecting. And I would love to change that. And I hope that you can bring yourself to understand that you didn't necessarily live up to my expectations either. And, and maybe that's the problem. We didn't talk about our expectations, Amanda. We just made assumptions. We had a whole bunch of experiences that misaligned with those expectations. And instead of talking about it, instead of reconfiguring them, instead of saying to each other, hey, here's what we're working with. Here's what I expect. We just got defensive. I don't know if this marriage is doomed. It, it might be if that's if that's really where you're at. And I mean, if you're out, then you're out. But I miss you. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I, and I've done a lot of talking to Dr. Friedlander. I realized that my anger, my responses to my anger has really pushed you away and pushed all the other people away in my life. And I, I, I need something from you, Amanda. I didn't mean to just accidentally pull a gun on her. All right, well, if you're not, Amanda, this would be a perfect opportunity for you to respond to me in some form or fashion. But if you're not going to talk to me when I do that... <laughs> can't believe I just pulled a gun on her. <laughs> well, I tried. Thank God I didn't shoot her. Where am I dropping you off at, honey? sweetie hey that was great let's do that again still nothing not gonna respond to what I said to you okay uh, I'm gonna go steal a pest control van then mm -hmm. 
real disappointing stuff there, chat. I really, I really thought we had, I really thought we had a chance. Knockout gas shipments being transported to LSX every two hours. Intercept and steal the van or blow it up and grab the gas. No, I'm going to steal the van. Let's go get it. By the way, a lot of what I said there is legit what I would imagine that it would be important for Michael to say to her. Like, that is, that is how you lay it all out there in an effective way. Okay, asshole. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Y'all see that radar just light up red? Oh my god. I just, it was just a warning shot. It's all it was. I wasn't trying to kill anybody. It was just a warning shot. <laughs> I don't want to be an alarmist, but you just ran four red lights. Also, Juice, I saw your message earlier. I do believe that if you and I were to ever do a heist, I think we'd be a good team. I really do think we would be good teammates. That was a little intense there, though. I, I I understand if nobody wants to roll with me after how unhinged I just became after one guy cut me off in traffic. After I've cut off numerous people. Steal and deliver the Bugster's van. Can do. Oh, shit. Silverfish, bed bugs. So we clean them up right then. Nah, we tell them we found a trace, but we don't got any appointments for six weeks. Here's my personal number in case there's an emergency. That works. Guaranteed. In two weeks time, they're calling up, bites all over them, kids crying. They're willing to pay five, ten times the standard rate. Creating demand. Sweet. Oh. We let them stew a few more days, then we go in and clean it up. More or less. Putting the pest in pest control. Okay, so kind of the same deal. First of all, Charlie, thank you for the 10 more gifted subs, man. I really appreciate that. Very kind of you to do. This is the kind of stuff, man. People freak out about these things. Does this stuff happen? Sure. But if I'm a pest control... I, I understand it's all satirical. It's all extreme. I, I understand what Grand Theft Auto is. But, like, this is one of those things, too, where you're like, holy shit. That's, that's scary that people would even think of that. You just got four rounds through your windshield, but the true tr crime was you running the red lights. Yep. Where's the name Dr. Mick come from? So my, uh, one of my best friends told me that I play golf like Phil Mickelson, which is true. I go for broke on every shot. And my username for a long time was Mickelson, which is an integration of my name with Phil Mickelson's name. And when I decided to stream on Twitch, I needed to make sure that doctor was in the name, and I also wanted it to be, like, clear and concise. And so Mick is a way that Mickelson has been shorted for a long time. And so that was what we went with. I just said, Dr. Mick, nice and, nice and clear, nice and concise. Howdy, Can fellas. I something? Yeah, I got a Class A bug problem. Long overdue. Our booking office is in the city. I'm afraid I can't help you here. Um, oh shit. I don't know if you smell those chems, but if you do, the damage is already done. I'm just inspecting. OSHA inspections. The warehouse is off limits to the public. Not to OSHA. I'm sorry, but you can't be in here. What are you gonna do about it, buddy? What are you gonna do about it? Do you really care that much? Do you really care enough we about the company? Come on. Dial 911. This guy's getting in a van. Oh shit. Hey, asshole. You don't... Is it really worth it? Oh, shit! Best control. Throwing haymakers. Ow. Hey! 
No vehicles blocking. He's got a weapon. That guy's armed. You should be afraid. Yeah, see, you're afraid. Good. Oh boy. I am in a pickle. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Extermination business answer to OSHA or some other inspection company? I have no idea. Okay. Easy peasy. Hey, that looks like a cool ramp that I could lift rocket off of in a sports car. Alright. Let's get out of here. Don't mind me. I'm sure there's an APV out for an extermination van. Don't mind me, fellas. I'm not going to draw any attention to myself and put my high beams on. Just an extermination man. Let's get Sound design in this game is perfect. Like the fact that this van creaks the way that it does is just so immersive and I love it. That begs the question, for in-person therapy, are there any regulations on how you design, furnish your office meeting room for clients? So yes. There are. You have to soundproof your rooms. You are. You have to make sure that your waiting room is uh, isolated out from the appointment rooms. You have to make sure that nobody can hear anything that's going on inside the room that you're in. If you have offices that are adjacent to each other, you have to make sure they're properly soundproofed. Um, ideally, you would have an, in, an entrance and an exit that are in different spots so that people can maintain their privacy. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that you are that you have to do to maintain privacy if you're in person. Satheron, thank you for the resub. I appreciate that, friend. Hopefully there's uniforms in there. Oh, shit. God damn it. Courier is delivering BZ gas shipment at HS. I already handled that. Hey, Lester. We got a pest control van. Good. Now we just need the knockout gas. I'm on it. Okay. Let's grab a car and let's go get it then. car do I want to take? I want to take this car. Obviously. Person went in to get gas. Easy peasy. What are you, what are you, what are you doing, Michael? Hell yeah. Nice night. We'll take the roof down. Hell yeah. <laughs> I know, my gun control is terrible. I had the safety off and everything. All right. I'm currently looking for a therapist, and I admit I have a bias against teletherapy as opposed to in person. Do you have any thoughts on pros, cons of the two? I'm going to be completely honest with you, Spirit. 
as I'm sure you would expect. There really isn't a big difference. Most people forget that they're in an online appointment within like two minutes of the appointment. I understand that people have fatigue around using things like Zoom and Google Meet and stuff like that because of COVID, but most people forget because once you start talking and once you start engaging, if you're with the right therapist, it's an easy way to engage. You also don't have to deal with all the BS of like driving to your therapist's office, doing all the commuting and stuff like that. You can make sure that you're in a safe environment for yourself. It's nice and controlled. You start and you're immediately in that environment. Um, there's a lot of research that shows that there is really no difference between in-person therapy and teletherapy as it relates to outcomes that people do really well in both shoot open the doors or destroy the van to gain access to its cargo no way. pull over right now oh don't run that shit over hey excuse me excuse me i dropped something Shit, go, 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 go. Nope. Oh. Oh, see ya. Oh, shit. Okay. Rid of the windshield. Oh, this thing's e-brake is really sensitive. Holy shit. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Oh, this is a dead end up here. Not good. We'll take the little feeder road. Man, those are some incompetent cops. Uh-oh. Hang tight! Oh! Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is so bad. Let's go. Oh. Oh. I see the We're in pursuit. Of course, nobody's getting gas right now. Go, 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 go. I'm not in the honking car. Go attend to your fallen brother. Oh, he's more important than me. Rid of the windshield. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, this is dead. This is bad. This is bad. Should not have shot the cop. Should not have shot the cop. Oh, no. We're going to lose him on this feeder road up here. Oh, go. Oh, man. Oh, man. Excuse me, folks. Uh, oh, what do I want to do here? Oh, shit! Not good. All right. Well, we tried it. It's the car, Michael. Oh. Oh, no. Oh no, I got a chop right. Oh, this is so bad. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god.
Come on, Michael. Come on, buddy. Oh! Uh. God. Oh, God. I, I gotta get the chopper down somehow, man. so bad. This is so bad. I just have to survive, Chet. I just have to survive. man. Beverly Hills is probably not the best place to run away from the cops. Not a shot that cop, huh? It was a bad idea. There are so many cops in Los Santos, and every single one of them is on me. Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh God! Get out of the car, Michael! Get out of the car, Michael! Get out of the car! Oh God! No! No! I don't give up! I don't give up. Sorry, sir. I'm so sorry, man. Oh, God. This is the most outrageous police chase. Gun away, Michael. Put the gun away. Oh, man. Yeah, don't worry about it, officer. Have a good one. Kill a million civilians and you can escape the cops only a moderate effort, but kill one single cop and they're on you like white rice. That's the most realistic part of this game ever. Yeah, right? Oh, man. Wow. That was... Alright, let's take something a little more inconspicuous. By breaking the window and hot wiring it. Okay. All right. Close the door, Michael. All 
Alright, we've got the goods. Good thing I was able to just put those boxes in my pockets and didn't have to use the same car that I picked them up in. Ooh, baby. Oh! Hey, damn it. The car. Wayne's World vibes are strong with this car. They are indeed. Alright, I've done what I set out to do. Ooh, what a nightmare. But we did it. Got my briefcase. Easy peasy. I only had to outrun the entire city of Los Santos for this. Thank you for the three months, Ichibum. I appreciate it. Hey, Lest. I got the good night guess. That's everything we need. I'll put out word that the score is ready to go. Now we all know why we're here. I'll be right back. I'm going to pee really quick and then we're going to do this thing. All right. Whew. We've got a store to take. The plan is simple. Elegant. Listen to Lester. Pay attention to the information he gives you and we'll all make a buck. If things go bad, you know the drill. This wasn't organized. We don't know each other. We got caught up in a robbery and acted in self-defense. But it's not going to be an issue, because everything's going to go just fine. The, um, the uh, alarm system is easy. Now, if I didn't need to be running things, I could have it offline myself. No problem, but uh, you should be able to get us a pretty decent window. How decent depends on the job you do. Now, uh, once it's down, you signal Michael, he makes the call. Things look good. We should be able to drop a present right through the air vent on the roof. Everybody goes to sleep. No problem. We take our time. If we run into trouble, we move quickly and with force. Any questions? No? Let's go. Frank, you're with me. Paige, you're in the truck with the bikes. Yes, Spirit, in sum, to answer your question before things got absolutely insane. It comes down to personal preference for teletherapy versus in-person therapy. It's worth trying. If you don't like it, you can always stop. But I encourage anybody watching this to give teletherapy a chance. I do it exclusively at this point. I don't do any in-person therapy anymore unless I'm doing field work with athletes. But I don't. Uh, other than that, I do all teletherapy, and it's been great. It's way more convenient. And a lot of my clients have said, I don't know how we ever did it in person before we did it in teletherapy because of how much time it used to take to like all in total to see you. So give it a shot. It's worth it. You're not like locked into it for your, the rest of your life if you give it a shot. Eddie, Norm, you got the van. All right, let's do this. I might have created another bingo since I know this game a little better. Fantastic, See Brian. We'll figure out a way to get that people. integrated with Initials the bot. Only from here on out. Uh, stug, uh, slugs. So I gotta make sure that I say this. If you are um, engaging in self-harm, which is a thing that people do oftentimes to cope with things that are going on in their life, I definitely encourage you to seek support from a therapist, somebody who's trained to assist you. If you're worried that you're gonna hurt yourself in a way that could be devastating, I encourage you to either go to the emergency room, call 911, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline or a crisis line and get some help. People who can listen to what's going on for you. Whatever, it, I can't say what it means because I don't know you personally. I don't know the context for that kind of thing. Uh, a lot of people worry that if they call a crisis line or if they talk to therapists or something, they're gonna be immediately institutionalized. That's not the case. Self-harm is something that plenty of therapists and crisis intervention know how to handle and how to intervene with. 
help you find a more effective coping strategy. But uh, I'm glad you're here, friend. I appreciate you asking that question. Uh, I've got all sorts of resources in Discord if uh, you need uh, help finding that information. But again, if it's an emergency situation, 911 or local emergency room. If it's not an emergency, you're just kind of worried about what this might mean for you, seek out a therapist if you can or talk to somebody on a crisis hotline, they can get you in touch with resources. And if you've got people in your life that you trust to be able to talk through that, that can maybe help you out and give you some support around the reasons you might be doing that, do that as well. All right, here we go. I'll drive the van. It's what I'm paid to do. It is what you're paid to do. All right, you got it down? I got it. Because you use too much gas on these guys, you'll kill them. Well, shit, don't blame me the way these canisters is mixed. Just be careful. <laughs> yeah, okay. Listen, I stuck my neck out for you here. Man, you don't need to tell me that shit again. I got faith in you, F, but you're unproven. Unproven? For real? So I didn't prove myself when I jumped off the back of that yacht on the highway, huh? Yeah, but these guys don't know you. They see some gangbanger with a happy trigger finger. They got money and their freedom on the line. I ain't gonna fuck this up, man. Good. I got enough shit to worry about. Hey, Mike, you worried? Did you pick the wrong people to come along on this? Remains to be seen. We'll have a good driver waiting outside with bikes, and they'll lead you out of there. The hacker should earn their paycheck by getting us longer inside, but the gun? Eh, questionable. Well, everyone in the store is gonna be out. You won't need no crowd control. Maybe, but they're still part of the team. They cost us, I'll regret it. know that I like Michael being that so okay Michael gets aggressive when Michael is vulnerable this is a big moment for him he hasn't done this in a long time you want to talk about having to potentially face incompetence Michael's going back in as if he knows exactly what he's doing, as if he never got away from this, and knows that a lot of people are counting on him. And I think that his aggression towards Franklin is a reflection of that. I think he's trying to offload some of the pressure he feels on himself to be able to do this the right way after being out for so long. And it's a lot easier for people to offload that into scapegoats than it is for them to sit with the intensity of what that means for themselves. So Michael looks at Franklin and says, well, you're new here. If this is going to get messed up, it's going to be because of you. I'm worried about your performance when, I mean, maybe that's true, but also Michael would want to look inward here. But again, his, his aggression is almost always linked to vulnerability. And that means that if I'm Franklin sitting in the car next to him, I'm thinking, okay, Michael is nervous. He's feeling some kind of pressure. And I might check in with him on that. I'd be like, hey, dude, how you doing? I know you haven't done this in a while. How you feeling? Let's focus on what we can control. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure Franklin's nervous too, right? Because yeah, he's got to prove himself. This is a real opportunity. This is what he's been gaming for. So yeah, they're both nervous and that's okay. Because a note about performance anxiety here, friends, this is a perfect opportunity for this. I know that, you know, you're not going to be robbing banks and stuff, but if you have something that you need to do, some sort of performance, whether it's for yourself, for others, whatever it may be, something that's meaningful to you. I do a lot of work with performance anxiety. What a lot of people fail to do when they experience performance anxiety is acknowledge it in a proper way. People will either try to avoid or stuff it because they think that if they don't attend to it, then it's not there. Not true. People will excessively seek reassurance from things that they don't need to be seeking excessive reassurance from. 
which means that their attention starts to get thrown out to areas that are not on the exa actual things they can control. But they also will sometimes micromanage aspects of their performance that they wouldn't otherwise micromanage as a way to over control. So there's a real push pull between what people focus on. The key to effectively managing performance is to acknowledge the emotional state that you're in and that you're going to be performing in lieu of, not in lieu of, uh, in reference to or with, uh, founded upon. So if nervous is the emotion that Michael and Franklin are experiencing here, it's important for them to internally name that and validate it. Okay, I'm nervous, I'm anxious. What do I tend to do? You notice the patterns. When I'm nervous and anxious, I tend to become, if you're Michael, I tend to become aggressive. I tend to become highly directive, even to the point, point potentially of being combative. I will often try to save face of my competence, even if it might be a good idea for me to defer elsewhere. So what are my replacement beha behaviors here? Focus on what I can control. Be clear and concise and direct. And acknowledge the anger without acting upon it. Stay in control. If you're Franklin, uh, I don't know that I have a good enough idea of what Franklin does when he's nervous. He seems to just kind of do this like minimization of trying to play it cool. So if I'm Franklin, I might be like, all right, I might try to play it too cool. Maybe I need to pay more attention to the environment. I might need to be a little bit more reactive. That's what I'm going to focus on. I'm not going to micromanage the many aspects of this. I'm going to remember the plan. I'm going to remember that I know how to do this. And I'm going to go from there. But performance anxiety is a very real thing, and it can get people tripped up if they don't manage it properly. Yeah, and he doesn't know the crew. All of that itch can certainly be uh, a contributing factor to it. General Andrews, thank you so much for the raid, my friend. I appreciate it immensely. Thank you so much for um, taking the time to come over here. Thanks for bringing your community. Those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Mick, licensed couple and family therapist, PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things, bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. Uh, I don't do therapy on stream, but I do answer questions related to mental health. I also do Let's Play content. Right now we're doing Dr. Theft Auto 5, and I use these games to illustrate various psychological concepts, uh, to talk about mental health, to talk about relationships. If you like a mixture of absolute mayhem, fun, and educational content, this is the place for you. General Andrews is a good friend of the stream. I highly encourage all of you to follow him if you haven't already. He's a wonderful person. I've been on his podcast, Two Players in a Podcast. Check it out on your favorite podcast station. And yeah, thanks for bringing people here. Thanks for sticking around for a little while. We're about to do a heist, so this will be fun. We're talking about performance anxiety as it relates to robbing a jewelry store. All right, this is it up there. There's a way through the site up to the roof. Man, we went over this. I'm cool. Yeah, so see, so Michael has a bit of a micromanagey aspect to him. He takes on a managerial role. He, there's some doubt, potentially. All understandable, but all... He wants to intercept that, catch it, make sure that he redirects his focus in a way that's going to be healthy and helpful. Weren't you supposed to pick me up hours ago? All right, I got a nice little Bluetooth headset. Love that. Hey, Bianca. Hey, you my dude, right? Nice one. Thank God there's no construction workers actually working on site. I forget something? Franklin, what are you doing, buddy? You coming? Get in the car. Oh, whoops. I don't need to be up here. This car? Yeah, what am I what are we doing here? This car is parked where I need to be. There we go. Alright, when the gas is in the ventilation system, give us the word. For sure, man. I got it. 
Right, Franklin dropping that gas. Excuse me, exterminator. Hey, there ain't no one around. That suits us. Come on, get up to the roof. Oh. Hey, shoot. Almost there. We're in HVAC system is leaking. I mean, my God. Just gotta just... get where I can throw this. Detail is ridiculous. Chuck it into the ventilation system. I got an angle. Hold the tab. Bro. We're waiting oh, on you. Sit tight. Oh no. Shit, not quite. Oh man. Get it. Got it. Get it? That was it. They going out. Do you love her? Well, I, I love her a lot. I just I wasn't thinking it was well, think about it like this. I mean I always say that. I told him to fix that goddamn AC. What's going on? Let's go. I was just rolling up with AKs. I'm on it. I'm on it. I've been able to get you about a minute and a half before the alarm will reset itself. 90 seconds? All right, that's why we pay you what we do. Hey, we got more than enough time to clean these people out. Let's do it. 120 remaining. This is a classy joint. What a huge take, my We're God. We're almost out of here. Screw these rich pricks. A minute left. Come on, baby. You guys getting hey, everything? Can you get your shit together and stop dropping loot? It don't matter if we lose some, right? Yes, it matters. So small. Come on, baby. Screw this, man. Get in there, shit. 40 seconds. All right, that's our target. Keep it up. See how much we can get. All right, let's go. Yeah, baby, we got it all. Let's go, let's go. Half a minute left. So for the last time, <gasps> move it. Now get the fuck out my face. Oh. You forget a thousand things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. I'll see you at the river. Go. Let's go, come on. Stay on me, across here. Let's go. We got a sharp left coming up on Dorset Drive. Push, let's get out of here. You crackhead. All right, I'm trusting you, bud. This bike, man. That's what happens when you're working with fools. He was an amateur. I should be able to get into a tunnel just here. The tunnel diverges, but it'll converge in a second. It gets muddy. Just keep going. If you know the route, you're not an idiot. These are the only bikes you choose. Don't go down the tunnels here. Take a left. Go up by the escalators. Going, we're going. Damn, this is crazy. This guy really did his homework. Anybody catch how much money we lost by losing G? Four stars, holy hell. I sure hope it is. I see light. We're out. The police know where you're coming out in the river. We're here to help, but get ready for a warm welcome. Oh my 
my god. Hang in there, boys. I got this covered. Oh my god. Full bars on this truck should help us with the cop. Here, watch your ass. I could have got out of the truck before we attacked a convoy of cops. I gotta shoot this other guy. Two bikes? What the hell happened? There we go. Man, ah, shit. I should have paid for a better gunman. What happened to his part of the score? I managed to pick it up. Nice. Okay, good work. Good shit, Franklin. Yeah, come on, get in. Lester's around the corner at the lockup. And that was that was pretty smooth. There were more cops on me when I took the gas than there was when I robbed the store. Oh, fuck, man. I thought I was going to be stuck to that bike. Yeah, I thought you were going to be stuck under a cop car. There got to be more dudes waiting around that way. We did not just get away with that shit, did we? You know what? I think we did. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. We did it, baby. We did it. Woo! Oh, one step closer to retirement. I won't say it went off without a hitch, but it went off. Good shit. All right, people. We need to split up. They're going to be looking for a crew. I'll wire your cuts when the rocks have been sold. Man, that shit was crazy, dog. So what now? We get out of here. Keep our heads down. Hey, you did good, kid. What'd I tell you, Lester, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, look, everybody take off. Hey, Franklin. Listen, Lester and I got some things we got to clean up. I want you to stop by the house a little later on. We'll celebrate, all right? All right. Okay. <laughs> huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. We're back in action. Nice. I don't care if you got money now. Don't you get it? That ain't what I was looking for. Not then, not now, not ever. I know it ain't important. Just let me take you somewhere nice, all right? Where are you? Uh, are you in a strip club? Grow up. Stop looking for the easy way. Tanisha, I gotta go, all right? Uh, I, I'm gonna change, I promise. You won't even recognize me. All right. Meet me at my place. Your cut will be in the account as soon as Lester's done some creative accounting. Let me get out of here. The boy's not... Not feeling the strip club tonight. Alright. Good stuff. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Part 4 of Grand Theft Auto 5 with a Therapist. We had a little bit of everything tonight, and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate your support. Again, if you haven't already, like the stream. Subscribe to the channel. You can turn notifications on or off. And uh, if you want to become a member, you can hit the join button down below. Make sure you leave a comment if there was something that stood out to you in this. Whether it was something I said, something that happened, whatever. Your engagement is greatly appreciated. And uh, if you're interested, check out the new merch store, Dr. Mick Merch, or Dr. Mick dot store. Dr. Mick dot store. Lots of You Matter theme merch. It's good stuff. All right, catch you on part five. Thanks for watching.